Hey everybody, we're back for another quick video on how to grow your business, grow your profits, scale your business in two to five years. And uh, Jeff, we, today we're going to talk a little bit more about the barriers to business growth. And one of the big barriers is oftentimes a business owner's perspective, perspective on who they are, what they can do, their mindset about um, what they can do. I, I recently heard a quote and it said, uh, you do what you do based on what you think of you. Um, talk a little bit about maybe some mental shifts that you had to grow through to take your businesses to the level of success and significance that you did. Yeah, I guess I was fortunate to get plopped into a company that had a big sales team, like two or three times in my early twenties, I just got hired as a sales rep. And I look around and I'm like, wow, they have a whole team of people selling and this business is really big, generating a lot of revenue. First, it was Auto Trader. It's like 20 sales reps in a room, 10 on the private party side, 10 on commercial. And I just kind of, I'm paying attention, right? I'm like, you know, it's not like it's it's mom and pop selling everything. This is a real company with a sales team and they have quotas and there's pressure and they're selling. And this is a very successful company. And then, you know, the the next company I went to, um, I don't know. They 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 had four or five salespeople. They're doing a million dollars a year in revenue. All of a sudden, they hire ten salespeople at once, and three or four years later, we're doing ten million dollars in revenue. It's like, wow, this whole sales team thing kind of works. You know, this is definitely a key to success is building that sales team. Um, so I was fortunate just in my early twenties, right out of a couple of years of junior college, to get placed in these companies that had sales teams, and I got to watch how they worked and kind of how they grew revenue and. I don't know. That was the only way I knew to do it, you know, is that that's what I kind of grew up with. So as I started my own companies, I go, well, you know, if, if one loan officer does, you know, three loans a month and I want to do a hundred loans a month, I'm pretty good at math. You know, I need, you know, 33 people, you know, is going to get me 99 loans a month. So I just knew I had to build a team of 30 people. So going to work on that, you know, interview, hiring, training, you know, and, and, um, most of my salespeople were kind of homegrown too. I never hired with experience in my industry. I got pretty good at designing training programs because if you limit yourself to, you know, if I'm a, a roofing company and I only want to hire roofers or, or salespeople that have sold roofs before, there's just not a lot out there. You're going to have to poach from other companies and then they have their own ideas. And so I, I home grew a lot of the sales teams and just had a great training program. It took them maybe three months longer to get going, but I was willing to wait that three months because I didn't have to pay as high a commission. So I got to hold more of the money. You know, that's, that's just some of my experience with growing a sales team, you know? Yeah. So what would you say to that business owner out there that is in a position where they've got a great product and they've got a great service. They have been a owner operator and they've built a, a good solid business. Maybe they're doing anywhere between two to 10 million or somewhere around there on an annual basis. Um, and they want to scale it. They want to grow it two to uh, 10 times what it is today in the next three to five years, but they're not a salesperson. They're not somebody that comes with the background of sales management and they don't know how to train salespeople, but they know that sales is required. Um, what would be your best advice to that business owner? You know, to develop a system, I mean, somebody is selling that business and that's probably the owner right now. So even though he doesn't consider himself a salesperson, he's taking leads, he's doing quotes, he's sending out bids and he's selling and closing and he's keeping customers happy. So to, you know, all you got to do in business to, to grow is really duplicate that system, but not everybody wants to deal with salespeople. So I know today we're talking a little bit about you know, outsourcing your sales management, you know, fractional CRO, chief revenue officer. So whether you're going to do it internal or have someone else do it, the key is you got to do it. You got to do it. And you got to do it now because it's going to take a year or two to get that thing humming where sales start to double and triple and hit those, you know, go from 3 million in revenue to nine. You know, I remember specifically, you know, the first year I did a million dollars in sales and I was by myself. I was selling everything. But I knew pretty quickly I'm never going to get to 10 million unless I have a team. So let's start building the system, write down what I do every day. How did I do it? You know, and just go duplicate yourself, teach people to do exactly what you did. And some will be not as good as you. But then I found a few that were better than me, which was great. You know, uh, just a matter of, I think, 
you know, starting to duplicate yourself, that's, that's really business, right? If you can't duplicate yourself, you're, you're stuck at that revenue level. You're never really going to grow. So you really doubled down on sales and marketing because that was your background. And then you hired out people to take on things that were more operational or administrative. But if a person's out there that is in a position where, you know, they thrive on product development or they thrive on, you know, training and operations and service and really, you know, uh, dealing with individual co clients or customers. Um, what you would recommend is actually outsourcing and hiring in a full-time VP of sales, or if they're big enough and they can hire a, a chief revenue officer, or maybe even going towards one of these fractional CRO type programs where you're taking a, a piece of a person that has the experience and expertise level. Um, talk about uh, anything that you would say would be uh, a challenge with bringing on a, a big hitter like a VP of sales. Obviously, there's a salary, there's uh, expenses that go with that, but anything else that you would say would be a, a challenge or a barrier that a business owner would need to overcome to scale their business if they were to uh, bring in somebody to take on the sales and marketing piece? Yeah, I mean, obviously, the big expense of hiring VP of sales or CRO, if it's a big salary, but it's not just his or her salary. It's like you're building a team. So you got to go hire five more salespeople that are going to go under that manager. And you've got little base salaries there. So there's a big expense. And the biggest fear is what if it doesn't work? I invest all this money. I'm going to spend, you know, two, three hundred grand this year, which might be half their profits in the business if it doesn't, you know, pay off. So I think it's it's important to, you know, set the goals and make sure that you're hitting the numbers, but you have to know what the numbers are. So I think putting a plan together of what's our average deal size and how many leads does it take to close a sale and how many times do they order every month or every year? Is it, you know, repeat business? You've got to put that kind of pro forma forecast together with the salespeople and the expense and just make sure it's going to make sense. A lot of times I believe that when you hire salespeople, a team, you have to go up on your prices a little bit to justify that all that extra cost. So that's what I did is I I raised prices 10% and I paid out 10% commission. So it really didn't cost me anything. My sales team was like they were free, but it was a little bit harder to sell because we're 10% higher on price. Um, so adjusting margins and you know making sure that the market will bear that. I think a lot of CEOs are scared about raising prices, but if you have good salespeople, they can sell a little higher price. And just have good customer service so that it warrants it and customers are happy and they keep ordering, you know. So just yeah. having that whole, that plan written down, build a spreadsheet that shows what that looks like, you know, and and be pretty clear on what you're trying to get to and how those numbers pull together, you know, kind of working backwards. Yeah, you know, we, we've talked to a lot of business owners and, you know, who have the aspirations, the desires, the dreams to scale their business and to create more time and financial freedom but they're always there's always those uh, limiting beliefs of can i do it is it worth the extra uh, squeeze to get that juice um, will it actually be something that i can actually uh, do at a successful level for a period of time or am i going to have to do it for the rest of my life so what kind of um, encouragement could you give that business owner that's maybe um, dreaming of wanting to scale their business but kind of looking at their to-do list already and saying, man, I got a crap ton of stuff to do already. I don't know if I could handle much more uh, to-dos that are going to re be required to grow this business. I think a lot of CEOs are so nervous about building a sales team because they think it's going to put more on their plate. And that more on your plate is only for three or four months. And then it actually takes a whole bunch of things off your plate, like all the pressure of you selling everything yourself. I mean, I hated that pressure. So it's like you're kind of trading pressure for growth. It, it, it's, I don't know. I talked to so many CEOs with small companies with no sales team that are like, they're selling everything. They're making a good margin, dropping a lot of money in their pocket as the owner. They're so scared to pay out 10% commission to a salesperson thinking it's going to eat up all their profit. But for me, it's like, no, this is freedom. This is, yeah, your company's bigger. You have more employees. There's a little extra stress to that. But you're not having to do it all. And when you go on vacation and sales are still being made and the business is not depending on you, I guess 
I never realized what a big jump that was for a business owner that's small trying to get big is just giving up control. Um, not all, you know, not all of it, but giving up some control in the in the process. It's just amazing to me. I think everybody's dreading it like it's gonna be more work, but it it's less work. Someone else is doing a job that you're doing all of it right now. And you're kind of diversifying your risk. Hopefully you have a, a sales team of 10 people. So you're depending on 10 people instead of just yourself, you know? So I always saw it as, you know, not that much extra work and stress, just maybe the first few months getting it put together. But as soon as it starts running, it's just taking all the pressure off you, you know, or, you know, you're one salesperson because you're building a team and it's, you know, that was, that was great. Yeah. Well, if you're uh, a business owner right now watching this video, uh, you might be asking the questions of what is it going to take me to scale my business two to 10 X in the next three to five years? If you're asking that question and you're thinking about what are the next steps? What are the things that I need to do? What are the things that I need to be? And what are the things that I need to have to successfully do that? We'd love to have a conversation with you. We'd love to uh, share with you Jeff's amazing scorecard. And it's kind of a great what if scenario where you can plug in different what if scenarios of, you know, what it would take to be able to scale your business in two years, uh, two to 10x versus the idea of five years. So you can kind of bite off what you're willing to chew. Uh, Jeff was willing to bite off uh, greatness and was willing to choke on it versus, versus nibble on mediocrity. So he went out there and and did something that not everybody not everybody's willing to do. He's not not everybody's willing to take the risks and and go after it like Jeff has done. But what he's done is he's basically built out a model and a scorecard that you can look at and put your own numbers into. And we can end up helping you to design a plan that works for you. We can also help you to overcome some of the common barriers to growing a sales team by identifying um, who is the right person for the position. Do you need a VP of sales? Do you need sales managers? Do you need sales people? Can you play the role in the sales uh, organization chart for a period of time? Or do you need to bring in a fractional uh, CRO or VP of sales that's gonna maybe come in at a part-time level. And uh, there's people out there, we'll actually partner with you. If you're interested in our uh, consulting services, we can end up partnering with you and showing you different ways to scale your business than maybe you're aware of. Um, Jeff, I know that one of the great quotes that I love as a business owner is, it's not what we know, it's, it's not what we know that gets us into trouble. It's all the things that we know that just aren't so. Uh, is there something that you knew for absolute certain that, as you grew, you realized it was actually a false fear. It was something that was actually not even something you should have been thinking about, but it was something that dominated your thoughts as you grew your business. You know, just the fear of building a big company, the fear of having all these employees and, and mistakenly believing that this all falls on me, you know? I mean, yeah, you sign their checks, you got to make sure payroll's in there. But I, I think that that fear of like not wanting to, to go to the next level because you're just scared of having a whole bunch more people on payroll. But if the revenue's there and the margin's there, it's all paid for and the company's growing. Um, I was in my CEO group a few months ago and we were talking about, I think there's 12 companies in there right now and there's nine that are over 10 million and there's three that are one to $3 million companies. And we are looking at the ones that are one to $3 million companies. None of them have a sales team. The other nine all have a sales team. Hmm. I mean, doesn't that tell you something like it's, you got to build that team, you know? And, and, um, you know, I wasn't real good at, at, um, financial projections and cash flow forecasts. So I had an outsourced CFO, chief financial officer. Hey, look at all this, my balance sheet, my revenue. When am I going to run out of cash? Am I good? What should I invest in? Would And so I had something I wasn't good at that I went and outsourced to. I had an outsourced CFO for years. I didn't want to put somebody on payroll for 200 grand. And, you know, I paid a couple thousand dollars a month to have them review all my numbers and give me what I needed. And I think if somebody's not really good in sales and management, maybe they outsource that part of the business. Maybe they're better on the product side or the financial side, you know, um, so yeah. Well, if there's a lot of people out there that are looking to some of these fractional um, 
chief executive officers. I know that you had a fractional CEO for a period of time. You've done a fractional CFO. It's becoming more and more popular. And just some of the barriers that we've worked through with some other companies is making sure that they, as business owners, understand the role that they're trying to fill. What are the roles and responsibilities that you're looking for? What are the skill sets? What are the what are the experience levels and the expertise? And then making sure that it's a good internal alignment with your company's culture and the people that you already have on staff. Because if you have somebody that's not a good fit culturally, it could just be adding more uh, fuel to the fire. And that does create more headaches. And we don't want to see you go through that. Knowing what the compensation expectations are, building out a uh, structure for the talent pool, knowing what the timing frame is of when you want to bring this person in and how many hours do you need somebody on a monthly basis or quarterly basis, and then how can you grow that or decrease it over time. And then the other thing is, is to make sure you have a good succession plan, because if you are going to bring in one of these fractional uh, consultants or fractional um, C-suite type of employees, you want to make sure that you've got a good strategy to communicate and to also um, uh, move beyond them and to be building that next person into the organization that's going to take on that role on a more full-time basis as the company grows. So uh, check us out, growmyprofit.com. We'd, we'd love to have a conversation with you, learn a little bit more about your business and what it is that you do and how we can help you. Any final comments, Jeff, on uh, what we can do to help business owners to scale in the next uh, 12 to 24 months? You know, I'd love to get on the phone with with some of our CEOs and just talk through why haven't you done it yet? What's the fear? You know, let, let's bust through some of that fear that's holding them back from growing. You know, I think sometimes just to have the conversation, you know, why don't you think it will work, you know? And what if it doesn't and we got to change something and then rebuild? It's just like that whole, you know, sometimes it's just the confidence to move forward and do something new. It's, it's scary, you know? Um, so I'd, I'd love to have the conversation and just, you know, poke some holes in some of the beliefs that, you know, it's either this and we grow or we just keep doing what we're doing and, and not hit our goals, you know, to to build a big company, have a big exit, um, you know, or have something that's cash flowing. So, you know, I'd love to just get on the phone and just kind of talk through some of the, you know, maybe they tried it before and it failed. I hired one salesperson, it didn't work, I had to fire him or I hired two and somebody took off with some of my customers. I mean, there, you know, there's, there's issues, right, with a team, but um, just kind of have that conversation you know, evaluate it and, and see if we can make a difference, you know, add some value to how they're going to do it. Yeah. And if you're thinking that it's just going to add more things to your to-do list, just remember that the actual process could be you removing things from your to-do list and creating a to-don't list so that you can start spending time in the area that brings you the most energy and enthusiasm and leverages your gifts and talents and abilities. And that could be the most fulfilling part of your uh, whole future is actually leveraging your talents versus getting yourself into more responsibilities, more stress, and more negativity. So uh, fear is false expectations appearing real. Let's identify what those fears are and uh, grow in the new year. Thanks, everybody.